We're here. Um, I have some questions. And if anybody else has any questions, feel free to just put them in the chat or you can jump on. Um, hope you had a, do you have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, definitely. Everybody's finally getting better. Oh, that's good. Did you get a, a bout of COVID, COVID through your family? Yeah, the whole month of November. This is the first day I've been in the office the whole month. Oh, wow. So, okay, well, welcome yeah, back. Uh, me and Elizabeth and kids and everything. So, oh, man, that's rough. So, yeah. But everybody made it through okay? Yeah, everybody's good now. That's awesome to hear. Well, health is important. It is. Well, so we've we've talked a lot about uh, different things, but I, I don't think we've really gone into like kind of your overall like business. Um, and I'm curious, um, I know you do clients. Um, is that is client the majority of your your business? Yeah, clients, the majority of our business. And then we also do affiliate and then we have some lead gens that we need to fire up. We don't spend as much time on lead gen as I want to, but yes definitely but mostly clients um and then we've got uh you know clients in three different countries and then i take care of all the marketing side of the business and i have two of my kids that work under me and then elizabeth takes care of all the web design and graphics on her side and she's got um, another girl that works with her and a couple bas um so yeah true family business so that's good or bad, especially when you get COVID, the whole business shuts down. <laughs> oh, right. Sure. And is, uh, is, is Clint your business partner on, on, on that? When you said we, or were you talking about your, you and your family or? Your, yeah, me and uh, my wife. Okay. Yeah. He, definitely. And then I'm partners with Justin Blake in uh, Infinity Ranking, which that one we built out to be more white label. Um, so we do a lot of white label on that side. And then we also sell some products. I don't push products like I used to just because of the time thing, but we do sell some products for to other people on that side of the fence. And you do have an SEO conference, uh, yes. SEO spring training. Yes. How many times have you run that? Well, we, the first year we did it um, pre COVID, you know, went great. The second year, we actually had to shift about three weeks before the conference because um, uh, everything shut down. Um, so we had to do a shift and we went digital um, and it ended up working out good, actually a lot better. It was actually eight days. We had 70 speakers Damn. and about almost 800 people came through it through the conference. Oh, so, wow. Um, so, yeah, it was it, it, the shift was scary but we had to do it um and then it just kind of fell into place we had never done a digital anything um so we were kind of the first ones i think out of the gate to do the shift and go all digital um but it worked out good um i partnered up with dory from seo rockstars also that oh. so um seo rockstars was also digital and then i took care of the um my software took care of the question and answer period. You know, it's where we had our cocktail hours and everybody just kind of, kind of hung out type of thing. So, yeah, I thought you handled that with a plum because I know that there were some people that were were upset at, mm -hmm. and they were just probably generally upset and they directed that at you <laughs> and fair or not, you know, it is what it is. Um, so you're going to have a, is there going to be a spring, 20, spring training 2022? Yes, there will be. So we're not quite sure what we're going to do yet. Um, and we're not quite sure where, when it'll be. I think it'll be actually in the summer this year. So, or this next year. So okay, so be um, we're looking at a couple different options because we're doing um, the, we started doing a mansion mastermind, which is basically we rent a mansion, 30 people. Um, some people stay at the mansion. Some people stay elsewhere, but everything happens at the mansion. Um, and we're having one of those in April in New Orleans. So, cool. uh, so that's, I'm trying to kind of, I don't want to have everything so close together just because of, you know, the people that like going to these things, you know, it's just kind of give them different options of what fits their schedule and everything. And so, yeah, but, I can only get away so much, you know, with kids and stuff. And so okay. I can't like, if it's like twice in a month or month after month, it's really awkward to be able to. It, it, it is awkward. And it also, you know, it, it affects your business. I mean, we're not quite set up to where I can be away a lot. Um, we definitely found that out through COVID. Um, 
to the virus that we got. But, um, you know, but it also gave us the time to look back and say, OK, what is what what gaps do we have? So even though this month has been crazy, it's also taught us on the business side um, some pretty cool things that we didn't realize. You know, we just took it for granted that, you know, if three or four people get sick or you have a couple on vacation, a couple get sick, everything, you know, keep going, you know, but it didn't, you know, that's the honest truth. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. You know, and luckily, you know, I was I was only down a couple of days. So um, but I was picking up parts of the business that I hadn't done in years on the web design side and everything else. So learning curves, you know, not a big deal. But, you know, it seems to be all back to normal now. Now we're just kind of playing a little bit of catch up. So we had perfect timing with Thanksgiving weekend because it's like four days. Nobody bothers you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And if they do bother you, they and you don't respond, it's sort of like, okay, well, you know, that's understandable. No one's going to be mad at you. How dare you not respond to my message? Exactly. Exactly. Right. So yeah. uh, let's see. So how do you get your clients? Um, most of our clients come from organic. Um, we rank very well in a lot of specific places on the web design side. Um, I always tell people we market web design. SEO is just a natural or SEO slash marketing is just a natural second phase. Um, and so, you know, we probably convert 60% of our web design clients into some sort of monthly marketing, whether it be GMB only, whether it be pay-per-click, whether it be full-blown SEO. Um, you know, it just really depends on, you know, on the circumstance. I don't take a lot of, you know, I, a lot of the people that Elizabeth does a, does a website for, uh, we don't even mention marketing because I don't even have any desire to do, you know, uh, you know, like a dress e-commerce site. I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> or like sometimes like a, maybe like a restaurant. It's like what they, they can't really afford ongoing marketing. But exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, and I'll do, you know, I, well, I, during COVID, we basically took all our, all our services and we just broke them out a la carte. So um, because we didn't want people to bail on us because we lost a lot of medical spas. Um, and then, sure. Some of the other medical spas that were closed down obviously didn't want to keep paying the full SEO price. So, so we broke it off into a la carte stuff like GMB only or, you know, blogging and posting, you know, different stuff like that. And then, hmm. and then as everything started coming back up again, we started moving people back into the original plans they were in. So, um, and I've never, undo, I've never undid that. So for the first time, like I can take a realtor on, which I don't take realtors on at all, but I'll do their GMB. Sure. Yeah. So um, they don't have money. <laughs> they don't have money. They're typically very hard to deal with on a, you know, a personal level. Mm-hmm. You know, they just don't understand that, you know, why is this guy always, you know, always getting the calls? Well, he's probably spending a hundred thousand dollars a month. <laughs> and it's probably- yeah. And uh, I can't tell you how many, so you're one of the few other people that I do know that is getting a lot of business from organic. That's how I've gotten most of my uh, clients over the years was organic. I rank in Dallas for SEO terms. Yeah. I don't do the web design stuff, uh, but I know that that's like kind of, if you can get that to work for you, man, that is the, those are the hottest type of customers when they find you ranking such a easy, at least for me, it's a really simple, easy sales process. They, oh, it is. they contact yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, especially on the closing side, you know, um, yeah. I just picked up a new client this last week um, and it's, you know, the one guy, the owner guy basically had me hired before I even came in and saw him. Um, and then this, I guess his partner, which I didn't even know was involved, he just came in and said, you know, well, what makes you different than the other four people we've had in here the last two years? And I said, well, you found me on Google. I was number one. And yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's that's pretty that's a pretty big selling position with all the fakers out there uh, and all the people who have been scammed. They like to see people ranking and I've been ranking so long. There's I've had several people call me just one last, the other week who was like, yeah, we talked in 2013. Like they were ranking in 2013 and I found you. So uh, let's see. So a lot of that involves local, right? So a lot of your, your SEO is local. Um, so I'm not a big fan of the web design model. So, uh, I'll try to stay away from that, uh, in, in this discussion. Most of my talking is pretty much about SEO. I'm curious. So I've done what I would consider the most like basic schema. Um, and which is where I have like this link where I go to this Jason LD builder and I just 
fill out some information and it puts the basic stuff in there. What exactly is advanced schema? Well, advanced schema is just taking, you know, and it's mostly done through research. So I tell people that, you know, like for instance, for a, a law firm, advanced schema can be very large depending on number of attorneys, you know, um, advanced schema gets into where'd they go to school? You know, where do they have their degrees at? You know, what associations and organizations are they a part of? Um, you know, all the stuff that a tool is not going to be able to find for you. You know, a tool is not going to be able to go out and say, you know, Dr. Brown, you know, he graduated from these three universities. Um, you know, he belongs to these two hospital organizations. He's on the board of directors for these two things. And this is typically stuff that you wouldn't put on an about us page. Um, people typically don't like to talk about themselves in a public environment for, especially when you get into the professionals, most of them, you do have ones that you kind of, you know, kind of need to back off a little bit and say, look, slow down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But, but anyways, for the most part, you put all that stuff in schema and, you know, I think schema is the best tool for building up, you know, just the authority of the website, the brand, um, letting Google know what all is this brand all about. Obviously, if you go out and you put in Salterra and search Google, then you're going to have pages and pages of stuff that's about me. Some of it's about another company in Salterra that's overseas. I think they're in Norway or something. They sell mattresses. Um, anyways, but the whole idea is, is that I want all that information to be seen on whatever page I'm talking about for schema. So for instance, an organization is what we typically will use for site-wide. We'll use organization schema. And that organization schema will have pretty much everything about my brand, about our company. So I'll put in my top citations. I'll put in my top Google sites. You know, I'll put in um, different GMBs because I'm talking about it on an organization level. So I'm not really pinpointing any certain area. So, um, and this is where it kind of gets tricky because a lot of people trap themselves by their domain name. So they'll go out and they'll buy Arizona Web Design and then can't figure out why they're having a tough time ranking in Nevada. So, um, so from a broad sense, from an organization schema like my company, I can put in there all 18 of my GMB locations you know, all 18 of those CID numbers. So, um, you know, because like I said, I'm not pinpointing anything. I'm just telling Google all about the brand, the organization. And so when you start talking and you start digging into doing research about stuff, you know, I'll do research on myself. Well, what's out there that's good about me? So um, it had some of my old real estate stuff I found, you know, found some a um, couple of lawsuits that I was involved in a long time ago. Um, it wasn't really me. It was just, I was just involved in the process. So some of the stuff gets really interesting when you start doing the research for advanced schema. And that's basically why most people don't do advanced schema is the research. You can spend hours searching things for a business name, for a brand name, for a person name. Um, and then you got to compile it all to say, okay, well, where am I going to put all this information? So, you know, so one of the things when we start going and looking to see, you know, like how I price schema, we price schema by the site wide, how many different services, how many GMB locations. I really don't care about the different city pages um, unless they have a GMB location. So we still put the local business on the city page, but we don't put obviously as much into it because it mainly drives the GMB. So, um, so if we have seven locations, seven GMBs, um, and they might have 12 other pages, we'll do the local business on those other pages, but it just won't be as complete as one that has the GMB. So once you get a GMB, you get all kinds of cool stuff you can put in schema. You can put in, you know, you can start putting in the GMB posts. You know, if you're on the, you know, talking about a web design service schema and, you know, you have four or five GMB posts that are about web design and put those links in your schema as your same as. So, um, so you just kind of start tying things together, um, both topically and geo, geo relevant type stuff. So 
Um, I like doing things about certain things. Like for instance, when a lot of people go out and they'll do the, the city pages will have 50% of content about your service. And then 50% of your content will be about your city, you know, that that page is on. Um, we typically will put it inside of accordions just so it doesn't look, you know, doesn't take away from the look of the page. <clears throat> but we'll go out and we'll get really personal with those type of stuff. So like in Phoenix, you know, um, where the Diamondbacks play baseball, you know, I'll use that as a point of interest in my schema and I'll just tag it. You know, we, Saltera has season tickets to the Arizona Diamondbacks. So I don't just put, here's the stadium, here's the name of the stadium. I'm trying to, you know, personalize it to the brand, the organization, the person, whatever it's talking about. You're creating so, like an entity link between exactly. the yeah. Diamondbacks and Salterra. Exactly. Which, create, which will improve your GMB's ranking in that area for people who are searching in that geographic area. Right? Exactly. That's the typically the idea. So but, yeah, um, even more broadly, I guess it'll also create, does it, does it create secondary connections? So you think about what the Diamondbacks are relevant to in terms mm -hmm. of where people come from. And so it'll create a more broad Phoenix just overall, right? Uh, yeah. Relevance. You know, and one of the things that people don't, you know, you can, like I said, advanced schema and, you know, siloing type stuff. So you got to be, you start getting into the creative world of SEO and it's technical, but it's more creative. So you think outside the box. So um, we used to, since SEO spring training, the conference was always typically going to be the weekend after spring training closed in Phoenix. So typically spring training would close the week of the 20th and our conference would be like the 30th or something. So, um, so we'll actually do an event, do an event on our website about opening day of spring training and then closing day of spring training because we're tying our conference in to that event. So, you know, you can even go to the blog about it and say, you know, it has all the different stuff about the Diamondbacks, you know, the roster, you know, what a little schedule for the spring training games. We just basically build a page um, mm -hmm. and copy it off the one that came from whatever stadium or whatever event, whatever. But I'm trying to tie that event into another event, you know. And so when you start thinking about schema and building pages and doing blogging about local stuff, you can really start to do some pretty cool things. Um, so why did you tie that in? Because it's not relevant to SEO. It's um, not relevant to SEO, but it's relevant to the name of spring training. Does it so, build the kind of the overall authorities, the strength of the entity? Exactly. SEO love, yeah, okay. That whole, that whole plan for that one is to build up the authority and the brand for SEO spring training. So and then maybe rank for like SEO conference or something. Exactly. SEO conferences, you know, get more organic stuff, you know, tied around that marketing, you know, even a marketing conference, you know, I wouldn't even go as, as, you know, as slow as SEO, I would do more marketing itself. Narrow, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I mean, so there's, there's some cool things you can do. Like we have, like our rodeo is coming up in, um, in January. So our staff's writing a page right now for the local rodeo for Scottsdale because I have a GMB there that's struggling. So I'm going to go out and build a little event page for the rodeo in Scottsdale and start figuring out how I can creatively tie my brand into that rodeo. Maybe I can, you know, be a sponsor, pay 250 bucks or something and sponsor something. So I don't know. So I guess it also, uh, since Google's always trying to personalize things, if you tie so you tie the rodeo to the, the Diamondbacks, uh, then if someone goes to a Diamondbacks game, then the rodeo is more likely to show up for, for relevant search results because of the personalizations of the entity. Exactly. That's just a guess. I, I don't know how true and that is. And that's the idea. It's just basically taking entities to the next level, you know, at a creative basis. So, um, I mean, like we all do, here's the things to do in Phoenix, you know, and then you'll have four or five things in there you'll link to. I don't typically will go to the, that item's website. I'll go to that item's GMB. So, um, so I'll start tying in GMBs to certain places or events, you know, in the accordion on the local page. Um, but in the schema, I can do a lot more <laughs> than, than, you know, I could ever, I could ever do on the public side. So, ah, uh, because it's just in the background for Google. It's in the background. 
Um, it just, do they ever like uh, ignore? Do they do they see some scheme and uh, you think sometimes and go, you know what, that doesn't really fit. I don't, I don't think I'm just going to ignore that. Or do they just kind of take it at face value and just go ahead and move forward with? Uh, um, I, I think it, I think it depends on on what the scheme, what the page is, and then what the scheme is for that page is. Um, and then you start talking about stacking schemas. So obviously every page has organization and then, you know, and then your local page will probably have local business and a service um, type schema. So you got three schemas on the same page. And so I think where, I think where you run into trouble is people try to put too much on the organization or the site wide. Um, typically when I, when I get, I get a lot of schema audits, I do schema audits. So, um, and that's typically after they've paid somebody to do their schema for them, it's not like, Hey, I installed Yoast. Here's my schema. <laughs> that's not, that's not a, a schema audit. Um, but typically what happens what will be is they'll, you'll find things like they'll put, if you have a video on the homepage, they'll put up that on the site. Like, well, the, you can only put video schema on a page that has a video um don't try to trick google because they'll they'll catch you um at least with schema so um same thing with reviews you know don't put a bunch of reviews in your schema if they're not showing on the public side of that page um mm -hmm. and definitely don't do it site-wide so you got to remember that the thing i try to tell people consistently is your schema is per page so whatever that page is about and whatever's on that page and then you got to be careful about the, I call it the schema junk. So rank math will go out and they'll build out a header schema, a sidebar schema, a footer schema. I mean, it's just, it's just junk, you know? So we try to make sure that the schema that's on the page is schema that, the, you know, that they're going to enjoy crawling. Um, a lot of people don't realize that schema is originally written by the big four you know google yahoo bang and, and yandex so it's a code that they know so i one of the reasons i think schema is so powerful is especially since open source came out and i don't care if it's wordpress drupal you know joomla whatever when open source came out the bots had a hard time crawling these new code systems whether it be php based you know, whatever the type system was. And one of the reasons why I think Schema is so powerful is the bots still struggle with that. We used to have a tool called Fetch and Render in Google Search Console. It was Google Webmaster Tools back then. And you used to be able to see how far, how far a bot was able to crawl that page. And most of the time, especially WordPress sites, you would get a partial crawl. So somewhere that bot stopped, might have stopped in the middle, might have stopped at the top, whatever. Um, and there's ways you can test to find that out. But nowadays, we don't have that option anymore. All we get is, hey, the bot came by on Tuesday and spent, you know, three and a half milliseconds. <laughs> Great, thanks. So what schema does is schema is crawled before it's even hit, before you even hit the content of the page. And that's why it's vital to put the schema in the head and not the footer. So a lot of people say, oh, my schema is in the footer, so I can so it makes my page load quicker. Well, first of all, you don't have a freaking clue if you think that. But second of all, is that the idea of your schema is to tell the bots what the page is before they even get there. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I believe, I still there's no way to prove this, is I believe if your schema is good enough, that the bots will spend very little time on your public content because it's going to be relevant. It's going to be pretty much the same. We don't use the same content. We try to mix it up. Um, so if we have 850 words about a topic on the content on the public side, then we'll have 850 mm -hmm. different words about the, um, um, in the schema, excuse me. So, um, but that's what I'd say. You just basically is your schema. If your schema is good and powerful and tells everything about that page, you don't really worry if it goes all the way to the footer anymore because mm. it already has the information. You know, it's not going to be in an H1 format, stuff like that, but it's already going to have the information. It's going to have the URL, what the page is about, what components are on the page. You know, is it a service page? Is it an e-com page? Is it a brand page? 
And you're going to have all that in the, in the scheme of the way we build it out and the way we teach it. So, so my question for you, so for SEO at the beach, um, I wonder if you could, uh, create a little bit of a document for, you know, we're, we're dropping some things here, sort of like an outline for some of the things you check or some of the different types of schema and some, any sort of templates that you have. Can you give that to the people that show up so that I can oh, yeah. try to create like a process systems and SOPs for people? Yeah. I also, I also will be probably giving away my templates. Oh, nice. Oh, really? Yeah. Tell me more about that. So, well, I, I live with a lot of people that have seen me speak and talk you know, about different things. I live in text files. My whole world is text files. <laughs> so I have text files for almost anything you can think of in the SEO space. So with that is I have a library full of schema. So I have schema for everything I've ever done. We do it in text files and we save it in text files. So and then we minify it. So it's harder to steal. Um, but the idea is, is that I have, you know, if you're a plumber, I have our plumber template, you know, oh, nice. That's awesome. You know, so it's an, it's, it's, it's something that it still takes a lot of work. You still have to do the research. You, <laughs> if you don't want to screw up and screw up a comma somewhere or, a you know, a semicolon, cause you'll spend hours trying to find that. So, um, so when we do kind of give away the templates, I have a little video to try to teach people, you know, how to utilize the find and replace correctly. Um, and just kind of the steps to take as you go down the schema and what that's awesome. Be replaced. So, yeah. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I, I can't remember. Uh, I did read you sh- sent me some notes on what you plan on talking about. I don't remember if schema was on there very much. I think just a little bit. Um, it really depends on, you know, I've, I've spoke about it so much. Um, I love speaking about it, but I just, I, I want to be able to have different things that we can talk about. Silo. Sure. Um, you know, I'm a huge believer in link siloing. Um, I'm a huge believer in, you know, how you build links to your silo. Um, so there's just different stuff more on the local space that, you know, schema is awesome. I'm happy that uh, I will have some stuff in there, more of the outline base of what we look for when we start a schema project. Mm. Um, but I'm not going to actually build a schema out um, like sure. during one of the conferences I did. Um, but it'll take that, like the whole your whole time to do that. Yeah, probably. pretty much, you know, and then it's mostly, you know, it's mostly the Q&A part of it. The Q&A part is where people is where is where most of the information is found anyways, you know, because just because I tell you how I'm going to do it and, you know, you might do it the same way. It's better for you to ask me of stuff that you've already run into, you know, um, you know, and, the, and they're always the biggest ones is I hate to say it, but most people are looking for the lazy way out. Ah. What can what can I do minimum for schema that'll satisfy the search engines? Yeah, that, that brings me to, now this is a little bit of a tough question. Um, I'm curious, and, and before you answer this, I want to lay a little bit of context on kind of this type of question. If you've done like schema split testing, now here's the problem with some things with SEO. It's a little bit like a, like baking. It's, you know, you can't just taste flour. You can't just put just flour and just flour, this type of flour and this type of flour, and then taste them all and know if that's good. So I suspect that you can't just do schema and rank really well, but do you have any, sometimes you kind of have to put other ingredients in there to see how good the schema is. So how much do you have any data on like, okay, I did just this schema or I did just kind of like the basics of SEO. And then I did a bunch of schema and it worked really well or whatever. Um, Yeah. I mean, I got, um, I, when I started this two years ago, two and a half years ago, um, I actually have a website that's ranking with just schema. No, oh, content, cool. no content on the page. Um, I did put in title and description um, sure. just because what Google was trying to put in, it didn't really affect the rankings. It was just stupid. So I, I, I didn't like to show people that page and go, oh, well, that's a pretty stupid title. Well, yeah, I didn't do it. Google just took stuff off the schema because there's no content on the page. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, it's um, and it goes through every single um, I still watch the rankings. You know, every single time there's an algo update, it still ranks. Wow, that's cool. And it's you know, but it is it's just schema. I put a video on the page and just to get it indexed because it's kind of one of the things that we get pages indexed by putting a video on it. 
So uh, sure. we'll, we'll pull the video off. That's not even real. I don't even care what the video is about. I just want want Google to know there's a YouTube video on the page and index the page quicker. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, so it's just, you know, there's, there's definitely ways to do it. We've, you know, this one here um, in my test site, I think I have like 2000 words as my description, you know, 2,500 words is my ambiguous description. So it's got content. It's just schema. Just, just not in the, not on the public side. So and it, and it ranks. Wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, See, I haven't it, tested it, that yet. So. I did a I did a thing with uh, um, um, SIA, and I did a whole test thing with it. You know, it's um, and then every once in a while I'll go up there and I'll just change something around the title to see if it affects anything. It's interesting because it fluctuates in ranking. So it'll it'll be number one, and then a month later it'll be twelve, and then it'll be back number two. And so, and it's odd, typically that happens when you're doing stuff to the website. I haven't touched this website in over a year. Does it get traffic? Do you have traffic tracking on there? Um, I do have traffic tracking on here. It gets, you know, 30 a month. and Which might may answer the question there because Google is probably tracking if someone clicks through and they see no content and they go, what is going on? And they go back. It could hurt you temporarily or even for sure 100 percent. so um yeah and i haven't put like i no, i use matsumo as my um, traffic tool so i'm going to put the matsumo code on there and compare it to analytics um analytics is just so far whacked it's unreal uh, um but you know i did it is it would be interesting to see like why one of the inside pages comes in and out all the time and then one of the inside pages stays number one all the time no matter what so, yeah. you know, and the schema is not any, not any difference. It's the same length of words, just about a different topic. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I probably should before before the conference, I'm going to go through and I'll do a write up about this and sh I'll show this website to people just to show, oh, you, cool. you know, that it it does work. And people will say, oh, that's a pretty long tail keyword. Yeah. <laughs> It's just but, doing one, it got indexed. And number two, it's, you know, Google thought enough of the page to put a rank on it. So, but it's still, a, it's still data. That's very important for people to understand that even a long tail keyword, unless it's like something completely random that nobody ever searches, like, like purple elephant fuzzy yeah. with size 40 shoes, you know, something really random like that, that no one would ever search. Then yeah. it's still something that is, is valuable to, to kind of understand the, because this is how you're going to really understand SEO. It's going to be through actual data and actual case studies of, of kind of pulling things apart and trying things without certain things or with certain things that you normally wouldn't do. So that's really awesome that you did that. And yeah, I'd, I'd it, love it to see that. Has, there's actually twice the keywords in Bing than there is in Google. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if, is it a female oriented market? Nope, it's, tech, it's technology. Hmm. So, that uh, is interesting. I wonder if Bing yeah, is lying so or... Maybe and Google is lying. And, and, the, and the ranks in Bing are like, I rank over Cox Communications in one of the keywords. Mm. So, and I'm just like, you know, and I'm like, okay, wow, that's pretty cool. I, I love Bing. I wish people would start using Bing more. But, um, <laughs> you know, but Bing's a, good, Bing's a good thing to do some testing on, especially about, you know, pages indexing because people will say, I can't get my page to index. Well, go check Bing. You know, if Bing's got it, then there's not a really a problem with the page. It's just Google just doesn't like something. Yeah. Um, and it could be because, you know, Google hasn't been back to your site in six months. So, yeah, try putting a video on there yeah. um, and maybe even send us some traffic. So uh, before we move on, so I do want to move on from schema because um, I know you're not just a like a one trick pony here. Uh, Steve Miller has a question and I feel like I know <laughs> I feel like you kind of answered this to some degree. What is the best approach for getting, and thank you, Steve, for the question, by the way. Um, what is the best approach for getting a solution for schema without doing it in-house? Plug in, outsource, Fiverr? Um, like I said, I mean, I'm kind of biased because we do schema um, for people. Um, I do schema for probably eight, eight different agencies. So um, they'll hire us just for the schema and then we used to be giving them all the templates and, you know, they'll take over typically the blogs and stuff like that after they get done with us. But um, the only thing I'd say is that with a plugin, a plugin is only going to get you so far. Um, and, but it's still better than nothing. 
So, and I'm not talking Yoast. I don't consider Yoast an SEO plugin. I, it's, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just so bad that, you know, spend a little money. We use SEO Press Pro. Um, I like SEO Press because I get Dublin Core, which I need for Bing. Um, but at the same time, you know, it still gives you the basics of schema. So um, there's some tools out there. Clint Butler's got a great schema building tool. Um, it's still going to take some effort on your part, but at least it'll spit out a text file you can start working from. So again, just remember, no tool is going to go out and find the research part of it. And, um, and I've never tried Fiverr or Legit or any of those schema, you know, people that build schema on there. Um, I've seen my schema, my schema is, you know, out there so I can kind of tell if it's mine. Um, but uh, it, it gets kind of funny, especially when somebody, Hey, can you look at my schema? And I'm like, sure. It looks like mine. Um, but, um, and again, you know, again, it's just, the idea is, is that, you know, in houses, I think always the best way, because I think the more that you learn about your client and you do that through research, you know, one of the biggest mistakes I see SEOs make is they don't know anything about the person they're getting ready to bid to. Um, or the company or the, oh, I'll have got five plumbers, you know, this, this, this one will be the same. Well, you know, that's when it starts getting dangerous. So, um, and same thing goes with outsourcing. So if you get something, if you, if you outsource something and somebody gives you a product, you know, and it passes in the schema tools. Um, and then again, when you load it up to search console, then you're probably okay. Um, but again, you want to make sure that it's stuff that you normally wouldn't find. You know, if it's a lawyer, you're going to have colleges they went to. You're going to have, you know, degrees they have, you know, and no tools, again, going to find that for you. But, you know, you'll know if they did some research, if you just do some double checking, you know. So I'll give a short answer to that, Steve. Uh, I would suggest maybe hiring Terry for one to three times and then learn from what he did and model what he did and then build systems in-house. Um, that'll be less expensive for you and you'll be able to do it, understand a little bit more what's going on. So I think that's a, that's a reasonable approach. Yeah, and you wanna be able to scale it at some point. That's what I mean, keep your templates. Uh, organization scheme is the same for every website. You just start putting in the right data. So, um, and then, you know, again, you know, once you start doing this, especially if you're quasi niche down, then you're going to be able to replicate the schema a lot quicker. So, yeah. Um, and or come to SEO at the beach and you'll get his templates that way as well. Yeah. So that's, that's great. And all I'm going to try to put all the SEO that's being taught there and, and I'm not going to try, I'm going to do it into one big kind of systems book for people that would take away so they can get it implement it as, as quickly as possible into their, into their business. Um, okay. So you mentioned siloing. This is something that uh, I, I've been doing for a really long time. Um, at least just kind of like, I think of it more of like conceptually organizing the site and, and linking with the most relevant pages. Oh, thank, thank, uh, thanks, James. See you later. Uh, uh, well, James, there'll be a replay. So, sorry, I got a, I got a personal message from, him. um, so, uh, can you give us a, just a really quick like preview of like what, like may, it's maybe not so much of what you're going to talk about with siloing, but more like what kind of results you get from siloing um, if when you don't silo versus when you do silo and, uh, and maybe some, maybe one or two quick bombs you can drop that maybe some people can take away. Um, the biggest reason I'm like you, I, you know, I think of siloing is directing traffic, you know, um, taking people to where, they originally came to the site for, um, you know, and then just not bothering with the other fluff stuff. So um, one of the biggest things I see wrong in our industry is everybody's trying to rank the homepage for everything. Uh -huh. and, and that's typically the number one reason why you need to silo your website. So um, your web, your homepage can't take everything unless it's an exact match domain. So I've got lots of those. Um, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, um, and then also, again, knowing what your client does. So um, I just took on a new plumber. 
Um, but this guy also does um, ultralight cleaning technology type stuff. Um, he also has a program to, um, it's for like uh, range hoods and stuff. And so he does a whole bunch of stuff that's not really plumbing related, but you could, you know, either cost per click or even organically ranking is going to be a hell of a lot easier than ranking them for a plumber in Dallas. So um, the first thing you look at is what's his domain name. And I'm so thankful he didn't use the word plumber in his domain name. So now I've got free reign. And that's when siloing comes in. So if you have a roofing company and they do roofing and they do siding and they do gutters and they might do spray foam, um, if roofing's the domain name, then your siloing is going to be super important to make sure that you're giving the right credit to the right pages. If somebody is coming there for gutters, they don't give a crap about a roof. So, you know, if they've got a gutter falling off their house, they don't want to go through a whole bunch of roofing content to get to the gutter area. Um, so when you think of siloing and directing traffic on your website and ranking, um, is you always direct the traffic and the rankings towards the inside, people call it money page, whatever. It's just the inside page that's going to take that brunt of rankings and traffic for those set of keyword terms. So, um, and then when you blog, if you blog about a metal roof, then you internally link to the metal roof page. You might externally link to one of your manufacturers or one of your you know, brand pages. Um, I'm a big believer that service area businesses need to be using brand pages. Um, so if you have, you know, a certain type of metal roofing that you're talking about in this blog post, link to the brand page. Yes. Um, you know, so there's all kinds of ways to do it. You know, I'm a huge fan of Link Whisper. I think it's one of the coolest tools out there. Link um, Whisper. Link Whisper. Perfect. Um, I'm going to show a little bit about it at the conference, but the cool thing about Link Whisper, it'll also go back to your past blogs and find all the relevant past blogs. Oh, that's cool. Uh, one of the things that we all do and what WordPress in general does is that blog posts start losing some strength over time. You know, I'm a big believer that every 18 months or so, if your blog's not getting any traffic or specific rankings, you need to regurgitate that blog and redirect it to a new one. So, um, but when you internally link things, now you're bringing traffic back to older blogs. And that's the best way to keep it relevant is just, you know, Bob clicks on a link going back to, you know, why metal roofing is so good during a, during a storm, you know, or something. So, um, but that's all internal linking. So internal linking is just saying, what is the current site? How is it set up? What services? What locations? And then you come into what pages do I, do I need to build that were never built? Um, you know, city pages, you know, like I said, brand pages. So you get a list of an idea. That's why we start, charge so much money the first month on every SEO plan is because of all the stuff that we've got to build out for the silo. Yeah. yeah. And when you do that, let's say you come into a project that's easy that you're siloed really poorly or not siloed at all, and you build out those silos, uh, you typically see pretty good results right out of the gate, like within a couple months. Yeah, big time. Um, what happens is you typically will see a, a slowdown like everything else because everything has been geared probably towards the homepage this whole time. Mm. And so now we're saying, saying Google, no, we don't want to rank this homepage for metal roofing in Dallas. We would rather rank the metal roofing in Dallas page. And, right. Um, and you, you know, a lot of people that we get, especially when it, you know, when it's areas, you know, they'll put, you know, two different locations on their homepage, you know, typically oh. on an H1, they'll put, you know, best Dallas plumber in Plano, Texas. <laughs> you know, and it's just now you've just convoluted your homepage where Google's they're not going to give you credit for both. I can tell you that. Right. Um, and they probably aren't going to give you credit for anything because you're not making sense. When you're it's... diluting the relevance for both yeah. of them when you do that. So, yeah, I yeah, know that's what I've noticed, especially for really sp like longer tail specific search phrases. Yeah. When you put up a title and URL that targets that specifically, 
Um, Google eats that up. And a lot of times I'll see when I silo things out, I'll uh, see, you know, sometimes they'll not be ranking in the top 100 and then all of a sudden I'll be like on page one or two. Yeah. Uh, for exactly. that term. Like, that's, you know, know, I'm, I'm a big believer in state pages. You know, even if you're just in one state, you know, the state should be the top of your geo silo, you know? So, yeah. um, and then if you have it in Texas and then you have, you know, you've got, a Dallas page, a Plano page, a Richland page. I mean, all the different little areas around Dallas. Um, and you all tie those back to the Texas page. You know, you talk about the great things about Texas, things to do about Texas. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, I, when you look at my site, I silo, I silo my site from the nav. So if you click on web design, you're not going to see anything in the main nav for anything but web design. If you go to my Phoenix web design oh, page, it's just going to be the web design nav. There's no. So it's like a dynamic uh, nav nav menu at, at the exactly. top of your page. Right. Oh, so, that's cool. Um, and then, tell us how you do that. And then I also yeah. have sidebars. Like my Arizona sidebar has all the stuff about Arizona that will be the sidebar for my Phoenix page. So yeah. now I'm, you know, doing Arizona and I'm doing city. So, um, yeah, that's. It's a, it's a, it's a hell of a lot of work. Um, but you, it protects you from a lot of algo updates. Um, mm -hmm. it protects you from, you know, losing traffic to the homepage because your traffic is going to lose or your homepage is going to lose traffic. So, um, I've got pages on my main site that get twice the traffic from that. My homepage does. Um, that's okay. As long as you're getting okay. traffic. It's exactly. And also I think this ties into what I, we had a, a Fletch and a Left Terrace on. We we're talking about topical authority and topical relevance, yep. and I think that siloing is is kind of a, another form of that because you're creating by creating a like a a, a subcategory sub subcategory page on your site about the topic. It actually helps your site rank for all the other things that are related to that. And when exactly. you do a bunch of that and you organize it and interlink it, the interlinking. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the interlinking is very important. How you interlink oh, yeah. the pages is critical to telling Google what you're saying is relevant and not not as relevant, right? Well, exactly. And you think about, you know, if you're linking, if you're doing your external links correctly, you're typically only linking to your new blog posts, I'm hoping. And then those blog posts are going to be the anchors for your pages that are going to rank. So a lot of people will come to me and say, there's, 50 keywords around this relevant page and I'm only ranking for like five, you know, let alone what position, you know, why am I ranking for all 50? And it's typically because of the way either your internal linking is stuck, you know, which people will say, okay, well, everything that's going to the web design page needs to have the web design anchor. No, that's, <laughs> that's not true. Your anchors are very important to mix and match those anchors, you know, um, mix it in their web development, you know, web design company, you know, so, you know, kind of use your, you know, your linking structure externally and internally um, around the other keyword relevance. A lot of people call them LSIs, whatever, but all the other keywords that are relevant to that page. So, and that's not, that's not even going into long tail. That's just the ones that Google will show you because it has more than 10 searches. Yeah, so at the SEO at the beach, you I'm pretty sure you will talk about siloing um, yeah, and you'll show some sure. examples. I know that you'll talk about your Saltaire website and some of how you're getting your clients from organic. Um, I uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Well, um, is there anything else that I haven't mentioned that you want to give us like a little a preview of talking about or that you think is really really working really well for you right now. And you can just, you know, throw a nugget out there for us. Um, I think the big thing, um, you know, again, I'm not going to, not going to really know the audience yet, but you know, if you're an agency, how you report and communicate is probably more important than anything. Um, and that's report and communicate to your clients. One of the biggest things that we see, you know, and you see all of us that have been in this for a long time, a lot of times either they've been giving, false reports or they've been giving you know no reports or um you know there's just the reporting is just so 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 critical um and I, I close a lot of deals just pretty much because of our reporting system 
Uh, and you keep your clients for longer, right? Keep your clients for longer. It's easier for them to not only kind of quasi understand what you're doing, but then to also ask questions. You know, um, we we have specific things we talk about for during our monthly strategy calls. And um, once we're through those specific things, then we can talk about anything. But you know, some I don't I don't very rarely talk about rankings at all. Um, mm. I talk about traffic. I talk about conversions. I talk about phone calls, form fills. Um, you know, we took we talk about trends. I talk trends a lot because I think if um, if people can see things going in an upward trend, even if they're not quite happy to where it's at yet, then yeah. that's a bonus. You know, so yeah. Um, and then we typically will run AdWords for almost every client, and most of them don't know it. Um, one of the things that we all get stuck with is, you know, I've been paying you for five months. When am I going to start getting some leads? You know, well, if you throw two or 300 bucks a month at AdWords, very specific, long tail, don't spend a bunch of money um, at that client, then those kind of phone calls go away. So interesting. Uh, so we try so, to do, do that also. So tell me, so for your reporting, because I think this is actually really important. And once you get the client to keep them for a lot longer, uh, maybe double the length that people stay with you, then, you know, that's double the revenue. Uh, you do monthly strategy calls yep. uh, for all your client, all your SEO clients. All right? our SEO, yep. All our SEO marketing clients. You basically just like, here, hey, let's book a time. And then you, ha- you, you prepare your data ahead of time. And when they, when you start the call, you go through the data or do you send them data ahead of time? And then they, they, they have, a, well, they have a dashboard they log into. I've built a reporting system that they can log into whenever they want. Most don't. That's, <laughs> you know, that's, that's a fact. I like knowing it's there though. I'm sure. Yeah, I like knowing it's there, but during the call, we'll bring that dashboard up. Um, we go through traffic immediately, you know, um, is it, is traffic improving, but more importantly, is it the right traffic? You know, I really don't care if I have, if you've lost 20% of your traffic and that 20% is turned into 50% more calls because we're targeting the right traffic. Not just, you know, yeah. tire kickers, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, or the high, like with like a, you know, some market, some industries, it's like, well, yeah, this client is worth 10 or 100x than this client. And so we prefer that exactly. one. And, and, so, so get- you know, and so that's, you know, a lot of things, a lot of time we spend is, you know, and we have these conversations on the GMB side and the organics, you know, is that the other company was going after the wrong keywords to start, you know, there's, you know, whatever. Um, I don't get into a lot about what somebody else has done. I talk about more of what I'm going to do different. Um, sure. And, you know, and it typically you can see things that, that work right. Um, and there's some things we do for every client uh, when it, you know, we're talking stacks and syndication networks and all the stuff that we build out the very first month. Um, and then we get into press release topics and all the different things around content. And then I'm a big insight believer. So it, a lot of people don't work off insights is one of the things I'm big thing I'm going to talk about at, you know, SEO on the beach is the insights are important because it gives you an idea of what Google places you into a group of things for certain topics. Mm-hmm. So if the topic is, when you have a dentist, you know, the topic is, you know, how long will my teeth stay white after teeth whitening session? And so you might be ranking number 80 for that, but because, it, because it was a topical thing that Google threw you into, there's your blog topic. Mm-hmm. So don't go out and try to reinvent blog topics, go out and look at what, what buckets Google's already placing you in and mm-hmm. write about those topics. Cause that's, that, those are the low hanging fruit. Those are the ones that you can go from 80 to five Nice. Because you just wrote a thousand word article on why, you know, how long does teeth whitening last after a teeth whitening session? You know, so um, and so we spend a lot of time on our calls around insights and around um, what what are people talking about? You know, what are people, you know, you know, now we're coming up on winter. So content topics are going to start changing, especially if you're into, you know, lawyers and slip and falls and all the different things that happens in wintertime. You know, those intents are going to change. So start writing about the intent. Don't write about, you know, how to solve a sunburn in January. 
So, you know, but that's the biggest thing is that, you know, I wanted to talk about from an agency level, you know, is, is we live off data. I, I don't do anything without data. Um, and only because I don't, I'm lazy. I'm, you know, I don't want to reinvent anything. If something's already working, I just want to do, do it better than what they're doing. So, um, but yeah, no one, no one, your client, you know, asking questions. I make them come up with the press release topics. You know, I don't do that anymore. You know, Oh, Hey, new website. Okay. Well, that one's a little old. Um, you know, let's come up with a little bit different press release topic. And I'm a huge, I like, Sim- oh. I like Simon's question. Um, you can find my, uh, what things have you stopped doing this year that you used to work? Um, geotagging images. We stopped geotagging images. Um, mainly it's just time thing. Um, and then that's probably the biggest thing that we stopped. And then I think a lot of the stuff, we don't do a lot of, um, I think it's more of what we're doing different this year than not doing it at all. Like we're completely doing GMB posting different than a year ago. Um, We're completely doing um, citations different than we were a year ago. Um, So a lot of the stuff that we were doing might, I think it's just the SOP kind of changed because we found a better way to do it. Um, But as far as something that I've erased, um, geotagging images is the first thing that comes to mind. Because we were geotagging everything and it's just you know start out with 30 images per client and it's just over and over again not just per client per gmb yeah you know so if a client has three gmbs then that's you know three times uh 30 or whatever (laughs) your minimum is yeah Um, we we still do obviously we still do the alt tag and description you know um so as we load these things we still do that but yeah i don't go out and geotag them and do all the stuff we used to do um, Simon actually has a cool geotagging tool that we used to use. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing. Um, and then I've, we're doing press releases different now. Um, we're doing citations different. Um, keyword research I'm doing different. So a lot of things have changed um, that we got to spend time on during the COVID thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that speaks to, you know, uh, I saw some question about like when in some Facebook group or about when do you think you're, when is your, when are your systems done? When are you done building systems in your, in your business? And it's like, well, it it pretty much never ends. Yeah, it never ends. Um, Especially especially if you have other people building your systems. Like I, we used to say, okay, VA, you know, here's your three tasks and, you write the SOP on how you completed that. Well, we ended up with so many of these things that we never read. <laughs> it's just like, just, just tossing them out. Um, but so that's the biggest thing is, yeah, the SOPs never change, um, or excuse me, are, are constantly changing, especially as tools change. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like I tested out Bright Local this year, um, and I'm just not happy with it at all so um i'll probably toss that whole sop about bright local so um but that's the thing we go through you know we go through different things somebody came out with something new um especially after this weekend i think i bought four or five things that i'm looking (laughs) (laughs) looking forward to to test and if it can improve the system then you're going to include it in there and that's something that you should be always doing in your business exactly always be working on that stuff so and what we're doing, we're, we use go high level now for every client. That's a big change we've made. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's pretty much the, you know, the, not just stopping things. But as far as, like I said, the only thing that I can think on the top of my head that we've actually stopped was the geotagging of images. It's, okay. It's time consuming. It's easy, but it's time consuming. So, right. Even for a VA. So, uh, well, any any uh, other questions uh, for Terry while we got him here? Uh, we've taken up a, a bit over an hour of his time, and I feel like we have. Um, this is a good time to ask questions. Josh, you want to say something? You care if I say something, David? Yeah, of course. Okay, so first, uh, uh, fantastic. I love the entire uh, thing. Thanks for sharing all of that, Terry. Uh, you're, you're clearly 
uh, a massive expert at at all of this and your your knowledge and sort of passion for it all comes through and and the way you talk about it so nonchalantly right like there's some people that that are like kind of new to seo or they've been doing it for a few years and they're super super excited and terry's like i've forgot more than those guys <laughs> in a certain sense right like uh so i hope that doesn't come off as, as anything uh, uh weird with with you terry i i really appreciate everything you were doing what i wanted to to just come in and, and point to is like think about how amazing it is that you guys got to sit on this call with somebody that's as well experienced and, and well versed in so many deep dynamics of seo and ask these questions and how much different it's it's likely to be being in a room with that person when you can ask the questions they may not be willing to ask the answer on camera and i'm not saying that terry has any of that information he may be an open book all of the time but the the reason i'm bringing it up is because there's there's an inherent value that I want to make sure people get because Terry just shared a ton of stuff that's outstanding, but it's not the same as being in a room at SEO at the beach with with his brain and his knowledge base and the questions that you don't know to ask that only come up through the presentation or through other people asking questions. And that osmosis thing happens in a room that, uh, at least as far as I know right now, there's not going to be any cameras or, or at least not footage that's released to the world. So I just wanted to bring that up as like, uh, one, thank you for providing so much value. But two, like, I'm so excited about the other value that I know is coming down the pipe in February to like, uh, uh, you know, lock this this whole thing together. So. Uh, hopefully that that wasn't me soapboxing in any way. I just I, I know the value of being at these events beyond uh, being on a training or a webinar. And, you know, I, I've, I've spoke on some of the other things you were doing, uh, uh, David, and, uh, you know, mentioned like some of the best things that I have in my life right now have come from attending events and the, from people to to business to to everything. And I just really want to plug the the SEO at the beach thing with with no interest in 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 the mix whatsoever, other than just saying, hey, my 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 friend David and Eric are putting on this awesome event, and they got somebody as as massive as Terry Samuels to come in and unload knowledge onto you guys. Uh, I, I would say it's it's a disservice to your business to not be there. So that's all I wanted to kind of add to it. No, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I am passionate about you know teaching, helping, um, you know, and it's and it's so needed. You know, unfortunately, I tell people all the time. I personally think Facebook has really screwed up our industry, um, just because there's you know I, almost everything that I see, especially around the audit, white label stuff. Um, it's just the the basics aren't even finished anymore, um, and I just I don't understand it. It's you know, I think a lot of people, it's, it's easy money um, for people that just take the money. And then, you know, it's, but again, those are just burn and churn type projects, but then it hurts people when they come to me or somebody like Simon or some other people in this group that, you know, now I've got to charge you five grand to fix what they just did. You know, I mean, that's, that's the sad part about our industry. So um, but I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I am an open book. Um, I don't have a problem sharing. Uh, matter of fact, the last two conferences I spoke at, my website's been under attack. <laughs> so, you know, I know. so I show my website and I, I show the pages that we're talking about. And next thing you know, that page has got, you know, 600,000 spam links. So, um, so yeah, I mean, but it happens. It's not that big a deal. But I appreciate everything you said, Josh. That's that's awesome. So um, Steve Miller asked a question. You mentioned white label services for agencies. Do you price by the hour of project or page? Are you growing your white label? Um, yes, we're definitely growing. Actually, white label is some of my favorite stuff that we do, um, mainly because I'm working with other SEOs um, is why I'd like to do it, or other web designers that kind of want to learn SEO. Um, it's all priced on by project and whatever that project needs. Um, I, I have the best relationship I have are the people that come to me and say, hey, Terry, I got 1500 bucks for this. Can you help me? Um, you know, that's the easiest, best relationship to have. I don't care what people mark it up to. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to know, but I price it to what my team's going to need to do to get to to where you want to go. So. 
Um, and unfortunately, under white label, most people don't charge enough to white label. So um, like you can't come to me and say, hey, I got this client paying me 800 bucks a month. Can you help me? Eh, maybe your GMB, you know, but that's that's about it. So um, but yes, I love white label. I love helping people. I love teaching people. Um, I used to have a mentor program pre or pre COVID. And I'm actually think I'm going to start that up in 2022. Um, and the cool thing about our mentor program is you actually get to leave with one of our clients. So um, it always, always seems to work out great when you can get people that have a passion to learn um, and they haven't been ruined. You know, I just, my big number one rule is don't argue with me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, there's lots of ways to do things. There's a lots of ways that we can get to the same results. Um, but you can't, unless you're a tester, like I'm a huge tester. So unless you're a tester, you really need to watch some of the comments and some of the things, some of the ways people answer on Facebook. And, you know, some of the ones I just shake my head. I don't even answer in Signals Lab anymore. It's just you know, I mean, all you do is get in fights. It's like, really? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, testing is so critical and and that's the, like the only time I'll like try to, you know, sometimes I'll, somebody will say something and I'll like, well, I'm not sure that's true, but it's like, I don't have test data on that. So how am I supposed to, uh, but every once in a while, it's like, I have test data on it. And sometimes it's like the test data might point to different things, but yep. then actually you're looking at it actually just by using, by merging the two data sets and by exploring it, you can actually create a deeper understanding. Well, for so, sure. Yeah. Don't, don't argue with Terry. If you have test data that shows something different, then that's different than arguing that's bringing up the test data and comparing your notes. Exactly. Yeah. That, and, and it's like I said, we do this with I, I do this with all I got some very powerful friends and we always compare notes, compare data because um, they might see things that I don't you know, and vice versa. Sure. Yeah, very heavy local. So but my friends are very heavy e-com. So we'll have conversations about you know, I have four affiliate sites that I really want to build up to sell. I'm just not that well versed in some parts of e-com. Um, and so, you know, I'll pick people's brains all the time. I just paid for an hour at Craig Campbell. And Craig spoke at my conference a couple of times. And the whole reason for that is I want to know how to link in e-com because I'm not coming. It's not the same way you link in local. Yeah. And even like the SEO is highly contextual too. So what might be good for one e-com business might be completely different for, uh, you know, another e-com, even some local, even one plumber to the yeah. next might actually have very different needs. Um, and like you said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So yeah, for um, sure. I also want to say thank you, Terry. You uh, I've picked your brain on, on running a conference because um, this is the, the first big one that I'm really trying to run. I did run a smaller one, Mountain Mastermind, um, that Josh went to and several other people. Uh, but I really appreciate your answers on that. You've been, he's been a very much an open book on that. So I really appreciate that and giving some really direct answers that I think a lot of other people might not want to answer. Just well, yeah, it's, uh, you know, conferences is a, it's a whole different deal. Um, you know, I, I did a lot of them when I was flipping houses. And I, the only reason I got into them during the SEO, because I went to two conferences in a row and spent a lot of money and didn't get crap out of it. Yeah. And so I was like, that's it. I'm going <laughs> to. You're going to do it right. Yeah, we're going to do one right. You know, we're not going to serve bologna sandwiches. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I can still want to even come in into this thing. But a lot of people don't realize is the out is the is the outsource or is the money you got to spend to make these things work. Yeah. yeah. And I'm well, honest, I've gone to so many. Oh, go ahead. When we, when I had to flip SEO spring training, uh, we were out 45 grand. The hotel was not going to refund us. That's crazy. And, and so it took us four and a half months to get our money out of Hyatt. Um, and they even wanted to take the, uh, another $9,000 payment, you know, when everything shut down and I'm like, Whoa, wait a minute here. I'm not even going to have a conference. So, um, yeah. So yeah, you won't let me. <laughs> yeah, you won't let me have a conference. Um, and so that's the biggest thing is it is the outlay. You know, they're a lot of fun. Um, they're a lot of work. And, yes. You know, and and the 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 invaluable mention, like Josh mentioned, the invaluable thing is spending time with the people that are there. And it's not just the speakers too. I've gone to many conferences, and this is part of why I'm making it. 
And um, a lot of them, just like the speakers, I just don't really care to listen to, but I just kind of hang out with the people that go to the conferences. There's a lot of badasses that do that. And so just being able to have those candid conversations with people, you know, at the bar, I think is going to be really, really valuable for, for, uh, for anybody who's doing SEO. And also I want to say that it shows a lot of the character of Terry just to show, because some people, you know, they see, oh, a competitor, like I'm doing another SEO conference. So he could think it's a scarcity mindset and it's incorrect, but to kind of not think of competition and actually in reality, by him helping me, it turns around and it helps him because if my conference goes well and I sell a lot of tickets, then that can help his conference because I'm happy to help him sell his conference. Hopefully you guys see that as well. And so we all win. Um, and so that's the same thing with the people at the conference. There's a lot of people there who have that good quality, non-scarcity mindset and they share. There's a lot of sharing that goes on in these things. So exactly. Yeah. There, and it's, you know, it's the group of people that I know that are coming are already going to be top notch anyway. So um, yeah. You know, Fletcher lives five miles from me. Yeah. Uh, so we have pretty good lunches together. So he's excited. Yeah, so. he's a great guy. He's one of my favorites. He came to my first conference. And, um, you know, it's one of the things that we look for from our conferences is not only getting good reviews and thank yous, but impressing people that are kind of bigger than you or next level than you. Yeah. So, when you have people like Clint Butler and, you know, Ted Kabitis and all these people come up to you because of, an, of another speaker that they'd never heard of before and, you know, compliment you on the, your, your choice and all this different thing. That's when it gets really cool because now you brought value to the whole room, not yeah. just. You know, not just everybody, but those eight. <laughs> yeah. And I hope to like, uh, I want this to be profitable for, for me and Eric, uh, but, uh, and I want this to be excellent uh, information for the, and, and also networking for the people that come, but also I want it to be excellent for the speakers. So Terry, anything that I can do to make it awesome for you, you just let me know. And same thing for all the other speakers. Yeah, um, that's I do. The, yeah, just the, that's the biggest thing is, you know, what, you know, the topics that, you know, the hardest thing for me was making sure that people stayed on topic. Um, <laughs> I, had, I had people that talked about something different than what they told me. And I was kind of trapped. I even had a guy come on that he gave me his outline and I let him speak. And then he actually did a speech about basically turning in other SEOs for, you know, black hat GMBs, all the stuff we were doing. And I'm like, ah, dude, what the frick? <laughs> so, yeah. And so it's, uh, you know, and then you get people, because my rule was no selling, um, you know, and you get people on there and halfway in, they're selling their product. I'm just like, ah. I'm going to allow some amount of selling, but it, it can't be like a, a Russell Brunson presentation. Not that there's anything wrong with Russell Brunson, but where the whole presentation is focused on selling something at the end. Yeah. The presentation needs to be focused on everybody, you know, will be focused on giving high quality information. And if there's something that we're like, hey, you want to learn more from this guy? Go here. I'm fine with that. I'm totally yeah. okay with that. So you can do that as well. And so that's like go high level because go high level was kind of introduced in our industry at my conference. And so a lot of people really jumped on it. I get I get like twenty five hundred bucks a month in um, affiliate from go. High. Nice. So many people signed up for it. But, you know, and so it was, but then we actually, we actually had an extra day for just that go high level. The guy came in and taught everybody for like seven hours. And wow. And so, well, yeah, you know, we were able to do that because we were digital. It wasn't no big deal about, Hey, get another broom at the hotel, change your flights. <laughs> That's funny. So uh, I hate to cut this short. I do uh, have to go here and I feel like I could talk to you for another hour, Terry, but I know you've got stuff to do as well. So thank you everyone for coming on and I'll be putting up the replay. I'll share that with you, Terry, so you can do whatever you want with the, the files or whatever. Uh, you're welcome, Joe Hen. Hopefully I said that right this time. Um, thank you everybody for coming on. And well, Thank you uh, for having me. Um, like I said, reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, you know, I'm a pretty easy guy to find. If you friend me on Facebook, I don't like politics. <laughs> ah, so don't talk about oh, politics. SEO. Politics. So you can talk about SEO. Yeah. yeah, you can talk about SEO, but I might offend you. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And we'll we'll see you in Miami Beach in February. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm so looking forward to this. Me so. too. I'm excited as well. Have a great day. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.